Oh, here we go. Hello, and welcome to the October Planet Poetry 28. Uh, I think the only event uh, on uh, poetry event that I've seen on Zoom where everybody shares their poetry uh, so everybody can read along with it, see it, and uh, absorb the words and the craft of writing along with the poet reading the, the poem. It, kind of a different engagement. Today we're going to be doing 10 featured poets, each reading about six kind of minutes. And then, and then, uh, and then afterwards, we'll have an open mic in which uh, anybody can sign up to read for for a couple of minutes, uh, two, one or two poems, depending on the how, how big uh, the, uh, the list is. And, um, and that's it. So if anybody has any problems sharing, uh, or has a phone, or just not that familiar with it. You don't want to. You don't really want to try to learn in the middle of the uh, of the event. A little too, it's a, li a little too stressful. So you can just send. You can put the poem in the chat, and I can always copy it, put it into a word document. Mark, you need to mute people. You need to mute people. Or vice versa. Yeah, I'm asking everyone, I guess, to mute. Um, yeah. I think most people are muted as they come in. They might make a bit of a uh, sense. So I will. I will begin uh, to break the ice. I'm uh, Mark Fishbein, I'm the poet with the guitar. I won't be playing today. Uh, and uh, I've been doing this for about a year and a half. I'm with the Poetry Global Network. So we do events, workshops, festivals, and a variety of other uh, things, poetry online. And uh, hopefully you're, you'll uh, look into all of our different events. And today I will, I will start with three poems I will read. Uh, the first is called Conspirators. It is based on a poem that I, I found in this book, the Oxford uh, Book of English Verse, uh, by one uh, Tidwick Tishborn, uh, who was a conspirator. I don't know, he was Catholic against the Protestant or was a Protestant against the Catholics, you know, back then in the 16th century. And uh, he was uh, sentenced to be, uh, to be executed. And he wrote this poem the night before, uh, the, the, the last, his last night to his wife. It uh, has three stanzas, and this is the last stanza. I sought my death and found it in my womb. I looked for life and saw it was a shade. I trod the earth and knew it was my tomb. And now I die, and now I was but made. My glass is full, and now my glass is run. Now I live, now my life is done. In the end, you need just one poem in the hours before the chopping block to curse the overlords that condemn you for crimes against their treasons, your life so cheap in their bankrolls of schemes. Just one masterpiece with fountains of passion, the magnificence of presence to be alive and how you attend, attended to every hour, soaking in light like a hungry flower. Now in a dungeon with foul smelling walls as your Socratic soul growls at it all, scorns humanity for complacency to misery, for stupidity and for all the liturgy of evils, shame, greed and power and power of greed. Last night in a medieval tower, you consider the infinity of the dreamless where God soundly snores. In vain you await a miracle, a Tosca to arrive, when you will sing your way to resurrection where the goodness of humanity dwells. Liberty, liberty, via Pelmar, setting sail to a new world order. Should you sleep, you will sleep no more. And so sit by candle and write your elegy like the poorly lamented Mr. Tishborn in his final hour to his young bride as the sun rose in his final hour to the ages, for all to know what was lost, for all to know what can be reborn. My poem of global warming, telling the grandchildren, tomorrow we will run out of graham crackers, the shelves in the stores are all dry, like the sidewalks with crevices. Watch out for your ankles. The clinics are closed and bandages dear. The bridges have collapsed into the scabby riverbed. 
tomorrow we'll run out of marshmallows and the milk chocolates. There will be no s'mores. We may never read another or another, like we have done to pass the summer nights. We live in the moment of the s'mores bubbling in black from the fire, afraid to synthesize the future and addicted to the and an addict and addicted to the taste of burnt sugar. But this is something you cannot yet understand, because at grandpa's house there were always more s'mores. And lastly, this poem about writing, which modeled very much after a poem by Paul Salon, Coffee with Life You. Coffee with almond creamer. I drink you mornings, I drink you middays, I drink you night times, I drink and I drink. I live in a box of computer chips, a caged phoenix. I write when the iron gates open to the arena of fire. I write in praise of nostalgia for a moment. I write for the sweet sense of understanding that opens our minds to music. Coffee with half and half, I drink you evenings, I drink you before I sleep, and when I rise, I drink and I drink. I stand at the windowsill with arms extended to the world. I write to test my skill as the spokesman for despair. I write to praise the moments of the mementos of childhood. I write for life to fit together, yours and mine, like a jigsaw puzzle. Coffee black. No sugar, I drink at moon break. I drink you with bread, I drink you with onions. I drink and I drink. I sit on a sofa with embroidered pillows and write for the suffering phoenix. To announce that flight will be united to the ground, I write to liberate the future so it will soar in fireworks. Coffee with honey brewed, cold brewed for dawn. I drink you with words, I drink your song. I drink and I drink. I lean on the back of a throne made of clocks. I write. The force of life feeds on poetry. I write to praise the fugues of language. I write to pay my way for the present from regrets, oblivious to time. What is life? Is coffee? Is memories? Is praise? Is the languishing for liberation? I write. And thank you. Thank you very much. So I'm going to introduce our first poet, joining me at the late hour as it is in Japan, Takaki. Takaki is a rapper and a performance poet on the microphone. Takaki means on the microphone. And is that the, the, uh, the translation, I suppose, a member of Kotoba Slam Japan, the national spoke word slam champion in Japan, and organized KSJ's West Tokyo tournament, co-host of uh, Tokyo Kotoba Open Mic, the first prize in KSJ's starting slam and first finalist of the national grand championship in December. Good luck then. Instagram, we'll, we'll put on the chat and all the rest. And uh, thank you for staying up late for us, Takaki, and take it away. Thank you. Okay, so hi everybody. Yeah, actually it's uh, 2 a.m. in Japan. <laughs> but yeah, I'm super happy to be here to perform my Japanese poetry. And let me share my screen. Okay, uh, today I have two pieces and uh, each piece have uh, like uh, three minutes also and uh, okay do you guys see this screen yes it, okay i see it you're good you're good thank you perfect so the first one is uh actually it doesn't have uh, any title so i just put the date i made it so okay uh it's that this piece is about yeah how do I make poems? And uh, yeah, sometimes I came up with the words with the melody, and uh, but I I don't think I'm singing. I 
I'm just reading poetry with a song, with a melody. So yeah, that's that kind of thing. So it goes like, Yubi o minai de, yubi ori kazo ete, yume o minai de, yume ni kakureru.諦めたくなるから池に浸かりたくなるから布団の中で早く帰りたいと思ってからじゃあもう遅いから歌歌う気なんてこれポーチもなくてこの子らはおととい一緒に生まれてくるなら死だったとしても彼らの命半分を削る
戦後米の国に米と呼ばれた国から流れ込んだ金の塊が海を落とした過度な死亡と食へのファンタジーから授かった肥満、新潟糖尿病、高血圧、脂質異常症を指して鼻をつまむてめえよ。低価格、低栄養価、高カロリーの教科書にくだらない落書きを残す勇気もないてめえよ。低所得層の子どもの健康を安全圏から売れるてめえよ。ファストフードで過剰なカロリーと塩分を摂取しないために創造的な解決策を見つける必要が、はあ、うるせえよ、ぶちのめすぞ。贅沢はこれで育ってきたんだよ。消費者が健康的な選択をできるよう、うるせえよ、ぶちのめすぞ。これで何度だって死なずにいられたんだよ。1個80円か100円か120円かを指して気にも止めない育ちなら一遍出直してこいてめえごの野郎。炭酸はシャンパンじゃねえ、散々な目にあった当てた流し込むファンタグレープだよ。炭酸電池がリチウムイオンバッテリーに変わってからも、胃袋が充電式に変わらない今も、今や3つ一気に頼んでも戸惑いや躊躇に苛まれることはなくなっても、その歯並びをかたどった表面は、私がかじりつくよりも前から再会に胸を震わせているのだろう。ふっくらとして見えてその実、突き破られているのに心なしか、また会えて嬉しい、とささやいているようにさえ聞こえる。2020年。疲れ果てた竹の塚二十二時を過ぎても入り口を突き破る行列の神経をつなぐ。潰れたフィリピンパーブのネオの味がするマヨネーズとスパイスが、かつて死ななかった日を見せ、塚の間飲み込むのに手こずる淡い涙がにじむ。This is Everything's gonna be alright! 的な歌詞が大嫌いな奴のための百円マッキーを。I'll be always on your side. みてえなノリに嫌気がさしたやつのためのチェキンクリスピーを。This is Takaki on the microphone. Thank you very much. Even. Thanks, Takaki. That was wild to, for us to experience that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And you do your own translations as well. Oh, yeah. I, I made my translation myself. Well, thanks so much for sharing that. What an interesting experience for us. Yeah, thank, great, thank you for thank great you for poetry, really. Japanese. <laughs> I love, yeah. And yeah. what's nice about this event also is everything is on YouTube so that if you want in a couple of days, you can go back and you know, just read over any of these poems, of course, like that. Okay.、Uh, so I saw、uh, David Sirwa, unfortunately, is not going to make it today.、Uh, just called then deeply apologetic.、Uh, So, I'm going to move on to, to,、uh, to David Eberhard, who has to leave a little bit early. David、uh, is a,、uh, born in 1941, lives in Baltimore, retired in 2010 for 33 years, working in the criminal injustice system. As a peace protester, he was incarcerated in Lewisburg Federal Prison for pouring blood on draft files in 1967 with、uh, Father Phil Berry, and I remember that, and two others to protest the Vietnam War. I remember that event, actually, David. He has published three books of poetry The Three Calendar, Blue Running Lights, Poems for the Website, Poetry in Baltimore. He has completed a peace movement memoir for all the saints, a protest pr pr、uh, primer. In 2020, he won the e n n a p a t Library Little Patuxent Review Prize for Poetry. And in 2021, he reviewed two books for Barrington Interest, Barrington Letters, and its Runs in the Family by Frida Barrington. Well, welcome, David. Thank you for that great bio. Thank you. And you、I'll、want to your, do my I'll screen? Put, yeah, I'll put your poems、there. on. Thank you. Yeah. Here you go. All right. And、uh, go to the top first.、Uh, the、um, small poem at the top. Oh, this, this, you mean the, this one here? That one, that one, that one, yeah.、Um, this、uh, recently, the,、um, Centennial, the Wasteland, T.S. Eliot, and、um, art, a, bi a biography just came out、um, and it talked about、uh, in the Times. It says、uh, biographer traces Eliot's path from avant garde radical to stodgy conservative. Now, think about the first time you heard the love song of J. Alfred p r u f o f f And I'm, I'm going to read this parody of that, but、um, the, the real thing is let us go then, you and I. 
when the evening is spread out against the sky and this next uh, image changed English poetry, I think. Like a patient etherized upon a table. Uh, Eliot and Auden introducing anxiety and, and uh, into stuff anyway. The parody is the love song of J. Fred Flintstone, where's the tea? The sun spread across the bedrock sky like a Bronto burger laid out on a table. I am not Joe Rockhead, nor do I pretend to be, merely a stone quarry worker willing to bowl a frame or two. I grow old, I grow old. Shall I wear my saber tooth? tiger suit rolled in the cave as the women come through speaking of the great kazoo singing yaba 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 daba do and i'll uh, move from there i'm getting tired of serious poetry but go to uh the statue discovered while digging for a subway in mexico city Statue of Coatmacu with hearts, cut palms, um, serpent on the top. Pretty scary, right? But if you Wikipedia, it's, it's not, it's more like an earth goddess mother thing. Anyway, my poem is not too happy. And uh, it's called Jeffrey Dahmer, a portrait. I love these Netflix serial killer things. His father insisted that he open that one box with head and genitals inside, his method of mastery, of complete control. I suppose we all have our secret thoughts. A guard sits near as Jeffrey Dahmer talks to Stone Phillips. MSNBC, mask of normality overall, as the serial killer reveals much, unlocking shocking locks. Howie was almost caught, the desiccated rock hard corpse parts in its barrel. Dismemberment played a role. He needed to keep these zombies near. He needed that control. A shrink examines Jeff, one paraphilia disclosed is, get this, sexual arousal by an internal organ's shine, say that of a heart about to be devoured. I think of Nixon, Bush, their acceptable dishonesty as they kill, and how we all compartmentalize and put away the secrets, oh so heavy. No, there will be reckoning, long to be caught, America's serial monsters, some blatant, others not. The things unsaid of sex, of death, of controlling, icy mothers, ghoulish fantasies, as lust builds, makes a mock of reason. That first hitchhiker once drugged, the first soldier in Iraq, and Bush would have to kill again. The frozen seas within, he's more and more cold. the control we need, perfection. The monstrous avatar grows old. I suppose, Jeff says, we all have our secret thoughts. Uh, a quote that hangs over this poem is Kafka's, we must take an ax to the frozen seas within us. For my part, I put on a mask often and often performing. How about you? Are you performing on this Zoom? Speaking for me, I will go to my deathbed having rarely lived in the sense of revealing myself and my inner thoughts. When did I come close? And I have a couple more poems on death. Mark, if I'm going on too long, just holler. Yeah, it's okay. This is a more um, positive note on um, suicidal Beethoven and the Indian religion of Rod Asana posits, we all have a unique tone within. 
The urge to sleep I wish to share, my death foreshadowed when I'm no more at all. Still, my plans for tomorrow will be there. Stairs to the second floor, but an imprint on the wall. Daily life come to nothing but frustration. Nothing but art whispers to me. Isn't that all I need? Mornings, my sketchbook, it's still there. Art is shit compared to you, my Guilletta. I can see you as I hear the notes. If I press my ear to the soundboard through the keys. Call it off? Will you see me no more at all? If so, do be frank. My deafness echoes down the hall. But I hear music in the silence, after all. To choose love from a woman, I am where we, I cannot live with me, much less to live with her. French tanks on flat cars roll by everywhere. I have a secret I carry everywhere, like a white line of surf that indicates the reef beneath, surrounded by neon notes. I have my courage, joy, truth, and warmth. The urge to sleep I wish to share enough with words. We have an inner sound. My plans for tomorrow will be there. Hmm. And in the ninth yeah. symphony, at the end, he says, enough with words. Um, then the last bit yeah. is, uh, yeah. is that yeah. enough? Yeah, that's a, yeah that's, that's a bit over time, but that's okay. great stuff. Thanks. And I love that last poem to Beethoven. I, I mean, I think we all, really unique thing. And thanks for that proof rock. <laughs> yeah. <Yama Dava do. laughs> Good stuff. Thank you very much, David, for for joining and sharing your stuff. Thank with you. Me. Thank to see you it again. Yeah. Good show. Good show. Thank you. Well, our next is um, Robert Fleming. Hi, Robert. Robert lives in Lewis, Delaware. Published in the United States, Canada, England, Ireland, and Australia. A member of the Rehoboth Beach and Horror and Horror Writers Association. 2022 winner of the San Gabriel Valley, California broadside, one poem, and 2021 winner of the best of mad swirl poetry and double nominated for a pushcart prize. Robert. Good oh, afternoon. I'm Robert Fleming, a word artist from Delaware, and I'm going to share my screen. So I need to make this. Okay, here we go. Okay, so today I'm going to share on a writing tool that um, I'm using now. It's called, it's a journal. And it, I've also included in it an element called a doodle, which I use in visual poems. And you'll also see me building up to uh, my best uh, piece first exploring how to use the tool and then um, using it. This is an example of um, the journal. And I was told about it by uh, one of my colleagues, Joan Belinget, who is, who is a former poet laureate of Delaware. And here is an example. Um, in this, I'm exploring what are the different types of words and images I can include. Um, so on the did column on the upper left, I'm including some very normal daily activities, cooked email, typed, floss my teeth. And then on the right, saw notice, syrup dripped into a bowl, and those are things which can become images or metaphors in, um, in my poems. What I heard, the microwave, microwave beep. And then in the, in the far right uh, square, I'm exploring the different type of visuals I could do since I'm a visual artist. So here I'm using color, uh, red. I'm also using a strike through. Here I put a, a, just a sample chart, um, which is a graphic image. Of course, I have some obscenities. 
And here I'm using the rotation, the bathing suit. And then I also have um, another image of a chemical. Um, so this was my initial exploration using it almost for the first time. Uh, this is another example. Um, yep, yep. Can you still hear me? Which I okay. Okay, so I, I, I'm just sharing now on the bottom right quadrant some more images that I did, which was some dust. And then I rotated the leg of an elephant. And if you notice before, I'm going to go back up one page. You see that the journal on the exterior has a black border. Um, so my desire was to move a piece towards its fin final place to eliminate the black border. I'm just going to share two approaches that I use for doing that. They're both using Microsoft Word. Um, and the first example is you can select from um, a table and select no border. And if you notice here, the image here, I've gotten, gotten rid of the exterior border. Another option in Microsoft Word is to use a feature under design called convert table to text. And you, you'll get rid of the, the border uh, permanently. And my inspiration for my best was uh, to take the point of view of a very um, well-known horror character, which is Norman Bates from the movie Psycho. And when I first saw this tool that Joan showed me, I wondered whether I could ever do a journal for Norman and what, he, and what his day would be like and what he would notice. So this is my, this is my best. And uh, Norman Bates was a character portrayed by Anthony Perkins in the movie Psycho, filmed in the year 1960 at Universal Studios, Universal City Plaza, California. And this was an imagination, December 11th, Norman Bates Journal. What he did, 3 a.m. peed, 6 a.m. hard wake up, poured out sour milk, iron mother's dress, soak sheets in Clorox, paid Fairvale California property tax, sharpened knife. And what he heard, a radio alarm clock, a key turned lock, Silence, Marion scream, bathroom fan, shower water drains, siren, and what he saw, cornflakes stale, dusty Bates motel sign, all rooms vacant, celery stuck in front tooth, hole in shower curtain, Marion straight teeth, red hairs clogged drain. And for the two graphic images which I drew, uh, I have an image, an outline of a woman which I imagine this is what Marion Crane um, would look like who was the murder victim in Psycho. And on the left side is an image of the Ford Fairlane car which is the car that Marion uh, Crane arrived at, um, at the Bates Motel. And I will put in the chat um, uh, the links for an MS Word document you could use if you want to um, try the, the journal yourself and also um, uh, my presentation for today. And, um, I want to uh, thank Mark for hosting this. And I also want to thank uh, one of my long-term colleagues, 
Joan Belinget, who has over the last five years um, showed me a lot of um, new opportunities in writing leading to creativity. And greetings from Delaware. Wow, that was a lot to, to swallow. I'm gonna look forward to seeing that again. Uh, what an interesting approach to, I don't know what, a, a sort of concrete poetry, or I don't know what it is. It's a new form that you're involved there. It's very, really interesting. Yeah, I look forward to that. Thank you. And I didn't know that aspect of your work. I know, I know you more, more for your tra tra traditional type poetry. It's the most interesting stuff. Everybody's got stuff in the closet. Well, thank you again. All right, next poet, Christopher George. Hello, Christopher. From the Baltimore area. Hi, Chris, you there? Yes. Christopher was born in Liverpool. England in 1948. He immigrated to the US at the age of seven with his parents in 1955 and returned to UK to experience the swinging 60s. He emigrated to the US in 68 and studied poetry with sister Maura Eichner and Elliot Coleman. He has been published in journals worldwide. He has his, he's, he's an historian, a poet, a biographer, uh, the uh, host of the uh, upcoming workshop on Edgar Allan Poe. I have his book on the War of 1812. I mean, and his poetry is just fabulous, as you'll see as well. Chris, always a pleasure to introduce you. Okay, well, all right. Let me uh, find my... Uh, uh, um, Mark, have you ever heard of the Tichborne claimant? Uh, no, is that related to, to, to Tichborne, the, the poem I read? There is Tichborne in England, it's a location. But uh, a gentleman of the name of Sir Roger Tichborne uh, died uh, at sea. And uh, there was some money involved in um, uh, his passing. Yeah, no, this and, was Chadwick. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I'll, uh, let, let me see. I'm going yeah, have, to you, have you found your poems, Chris? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, just hold on, hold, steady, steady, you know. Uh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, um, Tichborne was a skinny guy. And years, well, I guess pretty soon afterwards, this fat guy arrived in England claiming to be Roger Tichborne. Uh, look it up. I'll, I'll put the, uh, the uh, website, one of the websites that talks about the Tichborne claimant in the uh, chat. Uh, it's a very fascinating case. Anyway, uh, let me find my stuff here. Uh, Show all windows. Okay, here we go, right from the beginning. And uh, this is the, uh, the workshop and talk about Poe that I'm going to be doing. Going to do it on two dates. It's going to be pretty much exactly the same thing. Sunday, October the 30th and Wednesday, November the 9th. I put it in the chat a little bit earlier, but I'll put it in again. Uh, we want everybody to sign up for it. You'll le learn things about Poe's life that you never thought. And there's um, a lot of bits of trivia that we'll cover. Uh, it'll be a talk about the mysterious death of Poe on October the 7th, 1849 in Baltimore, and also a workshop I'll providing, be providing you with some prompt words, and you can either write in the style of Edgar Allan Poe or come up with something entirely different, a prize-winning poem based on ideas from Edgar Allan Poe. Anyway, fall in Baltimore this year, or anywhere in the East Coast of the United States, I, I think it's wonderful. And maybe uh, it's something that we need after the pandemic. Uh, I love the fall colors. And coming from England, the uh, colors here of the foliage uh, are especially outstanding. In England, the uh, trees, when fall or autumn comes, 
are mostly brown. You don't see the reds and the yellows that you see in the United States. And this is, of course, one of the vistas uh, looking out uh, in the Appalachians, uh, West Virginia and so on, uh, outstanding. And the particular house that I live in, in Harmony Hills, Newark, Delaware, where I now live with my wife, Donna, and my sister-in-law, Lisa. Firefall, birch flames the forest, Dogwood glows ember red. Maples, a pyromaniac's dream. Leaves like ashes drift earthward bound. Mist like smoke rises from the stream. The forest is on fire. The world is burning to the ground. Fall reflections. Cool night, autumn breeze on my face. I walk the warm planks of the dark. Distant green red lights blink. Something splashes in the water, duck or fish, impossible to see. The ripples slowly diminish. Next morning, I drive by a cornfield. The rows of maize leveled. A few stalks stand, ragged, defiant flags. And I'll end with this one about uh, autumn in England. English autumn. I see it in the stern face of this Roman god of autumn, laureled in gold and russet leaves, who stirs at me from this mosaic rescued from the damp English soil. I see it in the black trunk of this ancient elm which showers the empty bridal path with gold, though its brother has been bitten to a stump. And I see it in the eyes of the old major who represses a shiver, waiting for the Whitehall bus, staunchly at attention in the drilling damp. And on the 30th, same day that I give the first of the Poe talks, I'm going to this mansion just north of Wilmington. Uh, it was owned by a family named Shipley, who were Quakers. Uh, Joseph Shipley, I believe his name was, was a banker in Liverpool, of course, where I'm from. And apparently this um, uh, mansion in Wilmington is a duplicate of the one that they had in uh, Liverpool, and I'm going to investigate that. I can't quite imagine it because the bedrock in Liverpool is red sandstone, what you would call brownstone. So I don't think it could be identical. But the, the thing is, I was uh, contacted by uh, Lawrence Westgaff, who runs the slavery tours in Liverpool, and he alerted me to the fact that the Shipleys had made their money out of slavery so that's another thing i'm going to look at thank you huh. thank you as always chris thank you very much for um, the lovely poems about autumn and, and all your information and i look forward to the uh, workshop on poe for sure and thank you all yeah our next to poet bill cushing is called the blue collar poet by classmates at the University of Central Florida because of his years serving in the Navy and later working on ships before attending college at 37, living in several states in the Caribbean. He moved to California after earning an MFA from Vermont's Goddard College. A semi-retired college English professor, he lives in Glendale with his wife and their son, nominated for two pushcart prizes and a best at the net. Bill has two award-winning poetry collections of former life and music speaks. His poetry chapbook, This Just In, was released in 2021. He is currently working on two projects, a memoir focused on his years abroad on ships and a new full collection of poetry. My pleasure to introduce to you, uh, Bill, and I'll share for you, Bill. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, I'm actually- um, you, what, 20... Would John, you care to share yourself? It's I, I, can, right. I can. Make it so. 
Um, anyway, uh, thanks so much. And it was funny when I mentioned the mark, I was going to use this. These are, I'm going to start with two pieces from my new book, This Just In. Uh, and it's a lot of it is acrastic stuff. And Mark, you have a lot to say about that form. And it's something I just got interested in a few years ago. Uh, and so I thought rather than uh, just uh, to answer yours uh, outright, I would go ahead and uh, show you. Uh, now I can't see it. All right, why can't I find it? All right, now I'm having a problem. Here. Uh, I'll take it for you, okay? Why don't you go ahead, yeah, throw it up there. There you and, go. And the this first was one. Uh, yeah, this was that's the actual cover of the, the book. Uh, this just yeah. in. Uh, but uh, at any rate, the uh, the first one is based on this painting. Uh, it's, a, it's a Polish painter. I think the, if you scroll it down, it's head. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead. Um, and this, the first one, what I tried to do was read a story off of the painting itself. So it's called Hidden in Frenzy. The painting itself is called Frenzy. Zeus has returned to make up for lost time, cloaking himself in a steed dark as onyx. He coaxes his rider to climb. She wraps pale arms around his neck, and with eyes closed, she begins riding her mount. Rubenesque legs fix her vulva tightly against and along the ridge of his spine. Anticipating ecstasy, she shivers as his hooves rise high into the wind. His mane dances like black bunting, binding through and around fiery hair, his mouth frothing in fervor. Locked in rapture, his rearing stance, reflecting their orgiastic frenzy as God and mortal meld, while in the darkness behind them, Hera hides and meticulous as ever plots her revenge. So that was just a story I saw on that painting. Uh, the next one is a uh, uh, Fidelio Ponce de Leon. Uh, it's a 1938 painting called Ninos. And so I sort of reflected on that and, and came up with the, uh, the title being Ninos de la Pobreza Eterna, meaning children of eternal poverty. And I use the Oviejo uh, form, which is a Spanish poet, poetic form. So in Rembrandt use, they pause before coarse nature, abject children who can't escape this drab landscape, nor its archives of oppression and desperation. Barren famine distends them into El Greco perspective, babes suckling on the effects of coarse nature, this drab landscape and desperation. Hmm. And then um, the next one I wanted to read is actually a, a, a new one, uh, which sort of came out of a memory that I had. And this is called, and it's still looking for a home. So it's out there in the market, I hope. At any rate, uh, the poem is called why am I having a problem? Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Something popped up on my screen that I didn't want. So this is called First Work. At 10, I sought my first paycheck from Mr. Kunstler. The old man across the street, wheezing on a pork stoop, laid low by emphysema. I'd hear his body struggle, trying to sing songs he'd sung when young now chained to heavy tanks to inflate his lungs. Each Saturday, he'd sit behind a roll-top desk, retrieve his ledger to sign the check I earned, dragging their two metal trash cans to the curb three times a week. When needed, I'd cut the grass, shoveled snow from the walk. His signature scrawled and jagged, the only flourish he had left in him. But a half century before, he'd been a warrior, a Basque who fought Franco, an armed fury riding horseback through the forests or across mountains that span the Spanish border. On days he wasn't hindered by breathlessness, he'd recall those years, invading the plains, 
than sleeping on stone beds or hiding huddled around clandestine fires set after scaling those coastal steps. Once he croaked the words, Askasana, it's a herialda, freedom and country. And in that moment, his face brightened, his back straightened, and he seemed to shed age. Often my job's done. His wife of 60 years sat with me at their kitchen table. She poured homemade lemonade, fed me slices of burnt cheesecake. From our country, she'd say, her aged eyes fixed on her own distant memory. After he died, she tripled my pay to thank me for returning her husband a measure of pride. And if I have time, I would like to- Yeah, uh, sure, it's a short, sure, it's a short poem, please. Yeah, um, did I send you the other one though? No, this is all I have. Oh, okay, all right, well, I'll go with this one. Um, at any rate, this is also in the, uh, in the, uh, this just in, and somewhat seasonal, it, it came out of the Christmas season. It's called Hazardous Material. The package is placed on government approved scales when comes the inevitable question, are any hazardous or inflammatory items contained herein? I hesitate, I hesitate to answer because after all, hidden behind envelope paper are books. Is Bukowski as dangerous as Kukunin? Perhaps reading Ovid may pave the way to weddings for days. If I send Vonnegut or Solzhenitsyn, am I guilty of shipping sedition? Might young ladies taking in too much rich or flat be enticed down a primrose path? Transmitting thoughts across state lines could indeed prove dangerous, especially given that ideas usually prove to be the true enemies of the state. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. What a great idea. I mean, uh, when you, yesterday I was at the post office sending something, they ask, you know, yeah, is there hazardous stuff in there? And that'd be great. Yes, there's a, there's a poem by Sylvia Plath in here. Just a trigger warning or something for the post office. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. And I love the ecrastic work. That's a, I, prefer, I love to show ecrastic work um, often having the poem on one side of the page and the picture on the other side of the page, you can kind of like, you know, interact the two and see the relationship between them. So that's why I present them as such. And thanks, I, I enjoy the very much the pictures were fabulous. Well, uh, unfortunately, I, Svango uh, from, um, from Africa, who's a great, great poet, uh, just kind of contacted me and he has no internet. So unfortunately, so we're just going to be eight tonight and then we're going to get a chance to hear everybody here in the open mic for sure. But our next poet is Sun, Sunyana Pal, uh, who was born and raised in, Mer in Mumbai, India. She resides in Maryland with her husband, children, plants, and, the, and uh, some goldfish, <laughs> invincible goldfish, holding degrees in XLRI from Anamali University. Anamamali University, Sanyana's poetry is published extensively in international journals and anthologies. And she enjoys working as the director of the Poetry Academy of which I am the chancellor. And she helps me uh, organize these events as well as being a fine poet. She is also devoted to the practice of heartfulness meditation. You can follow with, uh, that and, and she just published a, a new book which we're all very proud of. And uh, welcome Sanyana. Your yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me here. And before I start, how can I not say thanks to Mark for keeping poetry alive in ways only he can. I mean, he's come up with these innovative ways through COVID to get us poets together. And, you know, something is always on. So thank you. The first poem that I'm going to share is called Evergreen. And this poetry was actually... Uh, critiqued and workshopped in Mark's DC poetry workshop. And I remember Mariam who helped a lot. So this, this poem is for the workshop. I'll share screen and here it goes. Evergreen. The dark green pine outside my window appears downcast black against the gloomy gray sky, but seems happy to see me awake as it sways in the carefree merry gale, encouraging me to be the same. 
The next poem I have, again, I, I have a very eclectic mix for all of you. This is amongst the first poems I wrote, I think it was in 2012, and this, this poem is from back then. Please don't you fail on me. Give me opportunities to love my Lord. Give me opportunities to serve. I may fail in some of them, but please don't you fail on me. Give me the courage to work like you. Give me a chance to love. I may fail sometimes, but please don't you fail on me. Teach me to love like you. Show me how to care. I may fail to learn them, but please don't you fail on me. Make me of value and relevance. Remove my darkness and impurities. I may fail to be clean, but please don't you fail on me. Mm. The next poem was also workshopped uh, with Mark and uh, this, this poem is very, very special to me. This poem is about my first kid who, who also had a speech delay. He, he didn't uh, speak as per his age uh, very fast though. So this, this poem was because of him. Squeaks. Squeaks the brown oak door as we open and enter inside. Squeaks the door closes as you throw your shoes on the side. I almost squeak for the umpteenth time. Keep everything in its place before washing hands. Squeaks, no creaks, but just as annoying. The couch as you sit to see the picture book. Squeaks the kitchen floor as I walk over it to get the trash bag and finish my chore. Squeaks open the door again as I walk to the trash chute. And ironically, the trash so squeaks too and my head will explode if I hear another squeak. But the door closes again and there it is. As if I don't have enough on my mind, but squeak goes the brown door again as I enter and wonder when you will speak. Squeaks and creaks the couch as you bounce on it, wanting my attention. Squeaks and creaks it even more as you show me the book you want to read, but still can't squeak. Ah, I mean speak. I wonder if you will need a special school and how to afford it. Squeaks, no creaks, but more annoying now. The couch as I sit by you and feel like pulling my hair, but then you squeak. A uh, hi with a grin and I look at you wide-eyed as you wiggle out to squeak or actually speak a bye mama and giggle while I happily shriek. You know, uh, my dad uh, passed away in 2011 and uh, in 2012 I was uh, reading Chicken Soup for the Soul and I saw this picture and I was amazed. This is, this is pretty much how my dad looked. And this, this poem is also about him. Degrees of worrying. And I'm, I'm so glad that we can share uh, the screen because this poem is so visual. I really wanted to share it before I, so here it is. Degrees of worrying. I saw my dad worrying about many things in life, like losing my mom to any sudden health issue or for me to find a good groom for marriage. He constantly second-guessed his parenting skills. Besides us, I heard him disclose to his buds the other worries from his heart and mind, where he thought I wasn't listening or old to understand that most men stress too about the same things that women do, like the figure, skin, scars, hair. On philosophical discussions, I heard that he also worried about balding and not finding a job if terminated or being able to perform in bed after a certain age, of course. Funnily enough, he told me that he sometimes worried about being locked alone accidentally in the room. I was confused to know that he was conscious of a few stretch marks behind both his knees. Amazingly, he didn't ever worry about life or the sudden accident that ended all his worries. Oh. Hmm. So, uh, as most of you know, the... Uh, but I am a Sindhi and this poem is about a very famous uh, Sindhi song called Ho Jamalo. And uh, here's the poem. Jamalo. When the authorities of Sakkar asked a death row prisoner to drive a steam train on the untested Lansdowne Bridge, his wife did not rejoice. When he rode the train safely, but beyond Sakkar until Hyderabad, and because he didn't trust, they will free him. His wife did not rejoice. When he was caught and imprisoned again and presented before the viceroy, his wife did not rejoice. 
When he reached his village after the charges were lifted, his wife merrily rejoiced and wrote this song. The remaining three poems I'm going to read are from my book, Refugees in Their Own Country. This book was published in August internationally and is available on Amazon everywhere. Puzzles. I have solved many of various kinds, but I can't piece together the lies that fed men or continue to, to fight against the country they once belonged to. Bricks. Before I say this poem, this poem was uh, workshopped in Mark's workshop. And I remember Finbel telling me to create it like this. And I'm so, so happy that, that this came out so wonderfully. Bricks. Red mortared with cement, they've laid them together. One by one, they built the walls that failed to protect them. This is the last poem, Massacre. Waves are a part of the sea, not controlled by it. Hatred started as a part of man. Thank you for letting me share some words. Well, well thank you uh, for finally joining us uh, here, Sanyana, and uh, for how you've evolved and developed as a poet. It's just astounding and wonderful and how you use pictures and and, and, and images as well to, um, and forms and everything else, just really out there and doing great stuff. And thank you for uh, being part of the workshop. I have a workshop I've been running for, uh, I've been hosting for several years, uh, every Monday night. And if you're interested in it, please get in touch with me. I'm, I'm Mark at poetwithguitar.com. Uh, welcome Svago. I'm gonna uh, put you on next after, um, after, after our last reader, after your time, you get yourself ready, and I'm glad you could make it fun, uh, indeed and all that. Our, our uh, next to last reader is someone I just met and really haven't met. Uh, Ash uh, Good uh, found me uh, somehow and, and looked at some of the things in Planet Poetry and, and asked me if she could come along. And I said, well, send me some poems or send me your website. And I looked at it and you can immediately see uh, there's a a very, very mature, strong poet behind behind it. So I said, sure, come and read. So nice to meet you, Ash. Uh, a non-binary non queer poet and designer living, playing and working in Portland, Oregon. Uh, they are the author of five books and chapbooks, most recently, Us Clumsy Gods from What Books Press, as well as confounding editor at First Matter Press, a uh, nonprofit guide to set your stories free, a weekly generative workshop, the curator of the high priestesses of poetry and a reader for frontier poetry. Their poems have been nominated for best and net and appear at in fault line journal of arts letters, Cimarron review, 45th parallel, uh, bird code quarterly and others. <laughs> nice to meet you, Ash. Thanks so much. I'm really happy to be here today. I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, I was really excited to see the format of this um, reading circle um, because there's a number of poems that I don't read from my book because I feel like they live um, more in the space of the page than perhaps just reading aloud. So I'm excited to read some of those tonight, today, this morning. I guess we're everywhere, so any of them are correct. <laughs> All right. This first poem is called Learning World, Reach, Withdraw. Fingers stretch. Anemone tendrils, ocean, mouth, yawn, return uncovered, body, jut, rock, puddle, sun, sparkle, cells, breathe, die, please, touch, gentle, move, free, fish, wave, crab, shuffle, gray, shadow, slippery, Never seen today. I am a tidal pool. Bring galoshes. An entire world depends on you consistently dreaming yourself alive. One, soft neck skin at once a promise of mercy and power. Satiated bear deep in forest, belly full of blueberries so will not devour. Only there will come a time when you want to be devoured. But these are millisecond universes of thought and desire or talking yourself out of doing what your body wants at least twice today. Two, 
If an emission of love is filled with fear, you might consume them. It's okay to rage. I am not a bear or a female praying mantis for that matter. In some tongues, everything is hesitant at back of throat, elsewhere, eager. You cannot count the languages necessary. Be wary of any hint. You are not the main character or worse. Three. They might insist you are intimidating, especially just sitting in your own power a little sweaty early winter, late morning on top of hips on a Wednesday. You can only know yourself from the inside out. Explain the view of Venus to Venus and it can't help but feel foreign. How can a planet know the bramble of its own skin? Hmm. Taut center, loose edges. Pulled in, severed stem. Gerbera sips, caress, petal, smooth, creased, breathing, dissolving, young, ancient, all I also am. Savor a guiltless tryst, re fidelity, our cosmos never asked. When we master that space between, after Andra Voltavine. I like to live in the gray zone. When you ask if I like it, I will say, I cannot remember it by that name. Labels are trouble for me. You will say, that sounds accurate to my experience of you. Androgyny, not this, not that, rather wholly unsensible. You haven't known me long. I have not known anything long, only I've been through voids enough to entertain decorating whims, when to lock a door or let a ghost in. If you see us dancing, no. After Lunita Valeria Velasquez. We think too hard and too much about how frightening to wear such naked joy. When did you learn, body? Smile seen may be unfairly seized. This toy is not yours. We are done fighting over scraps of happiness. Stop saying I don't dance. We want to dance with you to Brazilian beats in the kitchen while thighs sizzle, haze of cedar incense, no light but candles, lies all drip off now. If you see us dancing, no, we want the same thing to move us. And we're trying to find a fish in our spine that's been here longer than we have. How can we flow through this room body like water is all we know? what it is to move up current. It never was a hunt. Do you recall the day you learned the word repeat? We have always known the mission. Again, wade into swollen stream of ready to birth vertebrates, muscle memory, migration patterns, fissure, bone. And this is the last poem I'll share here. We move and stars blur. One, pendulum swings, overshoots zenith, mirage behind mirage ahead. So tracks here present mirage. And I want you to know you live a good life in this place of refrigerators and road noise and drone and drone, bored of manicure of surroundings, hungover on uncertainty, sells away from sloughing off another year. Come with me, let's leave. Two, living to pilgrim again, all roots hungry and find a city where we know we are wanted. Baby, when we get there, it'll be so different. We won't recognize it. Bed unmade, ripples delicious, it rains and I will make the breakfast each one of you asks for three different plates, not one compromise. We've practiced being hurt for a long time. Three, it's that voice again that says, call your trauma wound. Gaze falls to time traveling floor, grief off course around belly, bends again hard at sternum, heart fern tightly curled. Don't obsess over the spiral. It's tricky when we rub only by existing and some plants exert stress hormones if touched and we use all we got to sense where we stop. Four, and crow call begins. The sound of healing is sometimes unbelievable. Far off voice interrupts, wait, isn't it beautiful? We can do nothing but what is required for life. Receive processions of grief, visitors with clear intentions. Release when fire is panther, then water is octopus, air is crane, earth is Katie did, and we repeat ourselves. Five, 
we repeat ourselves. About time to call satiation exhaustion. Don't stop long to obsess. We change anyway. Where we finally rest, clean windows and sun stuns. We'll remember the song that plays, lay with universes on the backs of eyes. And if I could finally introduce myself right, I would say for just one minute, can we be in love? Huh. Hmm. Thanks so much for hosting us. Well, thank you so much. I mean, for me, seeing these unusual forms that you're using and reading it, just delightful to uh, to have it read to me. I just think it's really good. And I love those Brazilian beats, man. Once they start, you can't you can stop. Life is great with the refrigerator. There's just so much stuff in there. It was a lot. And I love the spacing that you gave us, gave us a little time in between the words as we were hearing you read them. Thank you for sharing that, indeed. Well, our last featured poet, as it were, uh, Svango was able to make it, and I'm so happy to he could. Uh, some, uh, some call him a poet, an author, a spokesman, word artist, and a wellness storyteller. He's a village boy with a dream, a 2X slam champion. His debut poetry, Trials, which in trial published earlier this year by Ubuntu Afro Publishers, and the 24 year old, 20 years old, Wordsmith Portrait found in stages in Zimbabwe, Sierra Leone, Italy, Zambia, and every coast. Svango, hi. Good to see you. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, First of all, greetings all, it's nice to be here. Uh, I apologize, I didn't make it to the last reading, a bit of confusion with the times, and I almost didn't make it to this one. Also the confusion with the time zones, uh, but I'm glad I'm here. And I just wanna update a bit uh, my bio. It's now four times slam champion winner, but enough about that. Um, yeah, that's in a two, two slams in one month. So since last month when I sent uh, Mark the, the bio, so, okay, I need to share. Okay, I'm hoping this is it. Desktop one. Okay. Mm -hmm. This worked earlier when I tested this. Um, do you need a little extra time? I can I can move on and then we come right back to you. Yeah, please do, please do. Okay. Yeah, please well, do. I see. Well, that ends. With, well, uh, Svango was ending the um, uh, the the formal uh, uh, it the, the formal readers here, and now we can move on just. Before I come back to uh, to some of the uh, all, all of you readers here, and one is Lee, who, who just informed me that she has to go shortly. So Lee, um, I have your uh, poems, I believe. I'll put them on for you. Okay, give me a second. Okay. Um. Oh, got him. Okay. Come up. There you go. Back to back to Zoom. Um, Lee, Lee, are you there? Hello, Lee. Uh, are, you on, are you on mute? Yes. Lee, are you there? And I see you're there. You are. Hi, Lee. Uh, you're on. You're on the mute. Yes, I'm not on mute anymore. Okay. What? Here are your phones. Sure. Oh, me. I, yes, I, was I, I, I just. I just saw that you have to leave shortly, so we'll put you right on. Gosh. Okay. So right. Oh, this one has got a, a not so deliberate mistake in, in the last line, so it doesn't make any sense, but um, that's a bit like life generally, so um, I'll rectify it. Sure. Okay, it's called Invite a Politician to Tea. I uh, tend to um, do most of my work with this uh, jazz group, and so most of it sort of stuff is thought to set to music. For some bizarre reason, this is uh, feels like Gilbert and Sullivan, but... Um, I won't attempt to sing, it's called, invite a politician to tea. 
Come here and sit beside me. Whisper lies into my ear. I'll cross your palm with silver. And pour hemlock in your beer. You tell me what I want to hear until your party takes control. Then reward all your cronies and leave me to take the fall. Of course you think I'm stupid and it's hard to disagree. But this fly agaric in your omelette and belladonna in your tea. I've always known you're useless and you never take the blame. But I rather like the color of your tie. So I voted for you all the same. Now my tolerance is fading for a scoundrel and a thief. So the jam inside your current bun has cyanide underneath. Democracy is just a sleight of hand that protects the sinner from his sins. Because the side that tells the biggest lies is the side that always wins. So lie, lie, lie again until the hustings are all done. Then perhaps a splash of strychnine across your cheesy scone. But I think I've now grown weary of all your corruption and deceit. The world is turning slowly, children starving in the street. So I'll waste no more time on voting. It's plain for all to see. If we really want to save the world, invite a politician to tea. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Do you want me to know another? Okay. Sure. Okay, it's called, um, it's called Pluto Rising. Uh, whoops, there's a, every time somebody sends a message, the thing comes straight up in the middle of the poem, so it's. Oh, okay. May we live in interesting times. Pluto Rises. Hidden worlds flicker into view. Things buried and forgotten begin to wake. Foundations crumbled, pillars no longer hold. Top is bottom, left is right. Inside is turned out. Unspoken words scream from silence mouths. And the dead, and the dead, the dead sing their love songs from the grave. Pluto rises, hidden worlds dance before our eyes. Betrayal has become the new fidelity. Truth is treason, lies are truth. Black is white, ignorance is wisdom. The joker trumps the king. Love is weakness, hate is strength. Tyranny wears the face of treason. And the old, the old devour their young. Pluto rises. Hidden worlds whisper in our ear, welcome to the new reality. Resistance is futile, intimidation is debate. Hatred has been made flesh. Fear wears the crown. Mankind lurches forward, clinging to the feet of pigments. And we children of the lesser God are left to spray paint our futures, to spray paint our futures on crumbling walls, crumbling walls. May we learn to live in interesting times. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lee. Where are you? Where are you um, reciting I'm, from? I'm coming from Hastings in uh, England and United Kingdom. So you have the same problem we do. We do. <laughs> Apparently. Well, I mean, yes, this is sort of a, we do, we do, indeed, we do. Uh, I did. Um, the, there was a big battle back then, 1066. So I believe on Senlac Hill. Yeah. And, and a king got shot in the eye with a, an arrow. That seems to be what happened. Alas, it was a long time ago. It, it uh, was. <laughs> it was in, in the United States, where I currently live. They think that 1866 is ancient. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got socks older than that. 
uh, most, uh, that's right. No, we we no, all do. No, most people think that 1966 was ancient. Well, that's true. <laughs> right. Oh, yes. Right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Lee, not only for your fine poems, but your, your wonderful reading with that great advantage of the British touch. Uh, and your, thank you for and, the technical assistance. I, I shall quite, try not to be a Luddite in future things. <laughs> it's quite all right. Thank you. We'll, we'll certainly get you back. Swango, how do you feel? Are you are you up to it? I think I'm I, I think I'm ready now. Uh, let me try. Well, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems to be working now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is good. There you go. Oh, the joys of technology. I'll turn my spike. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I'll read three poems um, that are uh, in my first book, Trials. Uh, which was published earlier this year. Um, it's available worldwide uh, on Lulu, and um, uh, the the um, the ebook version is available on Amazon. Um, but if you like these poems and want to get it, um, I prefer you get this one instead. So yeah. uh, this one is titled Dreamer. Um, I wrote it on the second of May, twenty nineteen. I love uh, putting the dates there uh, because it reminds me of those times. Why should I do it now if I can do it later? That's what I told myself. Distant plans seem safer. Claiming perfectionism, intricate details are fascinating till you realize it's a cover for fearful procrastination. Promising tired roads for years in a destination, walk the talk to find your destination, but you can't do that whilst allowing too much hesitation. Talk is cheap. It's not enough to manifest a vision, dreaming big, but spending hours on television. I was on a joystick control, but yet out of control. Then later I got consoled for teaching study over a gaming console. With little time I've used on my dealings, I have been making a killing. Yet if I put in more work into this, I would be staking to the ceiling. See, I'm willing. I'm tired too, and you know the feeling. And if I did it better, it would come with the healing and extinguish the hell in my conscience. Waking up a few minutes before the sun, I just want to be better. I do this for my son, for my mother, my family. I'm making a plan, no more glorifying comfort until I am done. Completing tasks is a therapy session. I need a recharge through literary meditation. I heal my buckles by reading the wisdom of Wallace D. Wackles. Peace. Um, yeah, so I'm a spoken word artist. Uh, so um, most of my poems, I memorize them. So you might hear words that you don't see in the, in, on the screen. Uh, that's me remembering the, the spoken word poem, but I'll try to read while I'm looking at it in the screen. Uh, this one is titled Scam. I wrote this on the 15th of August, 2020. Everything is a Ponzi scheme from the live news on the TV screen. White girls tan, black girls bleach skin. We sit back to watch colleges diminish dreams. Controlling perceptions, applying the law with exceptions, genetic engineering and loaded injections, missing links and misdirection. Everything seems like a scam, even the hugs from your fam, even the DJs on the show want you to pay to play your jam. She thinks love can be shared on gram, so she will strip or take on cam. He's into sniffing a kilogram, and for a dollar, he can kill your gram. Till the day we awaken to reclaim what was taken, stabilize all that is shaken, rediscover the forsaken. And though our hearts have been aching in the midst of the smiles we've been faking, I can feel these cases are breaking like they just went through a coup in heaven. Mm. Um, this one is titled Sunset. I wrote this on the 26th of July, 2020. It was a Sunday. As the sun goes down, the shadows unite. In the other hemisphere, we are touched by new light. But the sun sets for the vendor. He ain't done yet. The chips he made all day he couldn't feed his son yet. Day to day, he dodges trouble, thought bubbles for ideas to lessen the trouble. Tomorrow remains a puzzle. He's living for the moment. His wife is on the go to, no energy for romance. 
His uncle in hospital, they stepped in in the alley. The shadow of death has been walking in the valley for a t-shirt of a party that he got from a rally. The man he voted for is sleeping in Pali. The salary they get is changed to the leaders, yet they still believe that change is through the leaders. The revolution was sold to the highest bidders, dribblers, and murderers. Educated brains tied within the chains of capitalistic gains. These are cannibalistic aims, humans swallowed alive, zombies, the walking dead. The sun sinks, but it will rise. We have our lows to know our highs. Someone's born when someone dies. So our prayers reach the skies. Peace. Thank you very much. Oh. Hmm. Well, thank you, Swango. Yeah. It's interesting how that style of poetry has reached all around the world and you're coming out with new variations on it. Great. And I love that you've memorized your work. I envy you for that. <laughs> Very Thank you much. very much. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much for, for joining us. Well, with with we, that's just great. But for all of us that are left, um, why don't we just go around the room and those that would like to read, uh, surely do. I would like to invite Lacan to read first. After all, it's uh, it's like 2.30 in the morning there in Mandela. And I see you, st are you still up? <laughs> of course, I'm still here, Mark. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> Why don't, you, why don't you read, why, why, why don't you perform and then maybe you can get some sleep and thank you for, for hanging out. Lacan, <laughs> I, I know, of course, he's the spearhead and the um, of the Poetry Global Network. We met a couple of years ago, the slam winner of, um, and has been published and is well known as been at some 3,500 different events he's performed at and uh, the list of um, you know, of, of his accomplishments go on and on, uh, as well as his more recent workshop in uh, performing poetry, which I learned more than I'll ever be able to use. Uh, and I'm really grateful for it. Lacan, hi. Hello, Mark. <laughs> Maganda umaga. Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I, I always love this platform um, because I don't know, there's something about, about uh, Mark's um, gravity. <laughs> so um, thank you. Thank you so much for all the poets who had shared. And um, I will share um, two pieces. Uh, is that okay? Or Please. just one? Oh, no, okay. no. I think at this point we're, we're fine for time, of course. Okay, cool. So the first one, I this is um, featured by uh, Tupelo Press in the US. Um, it's called E-Level. <clears throat> Elevators depress me, the feeling of waiting for a door to open feels like a good pill, taking time to affect me. Control is ushered by time, like a psychiatrist, to tryst entrances like gaslighting. Elevators do have great lighting, perfect for selfies, that fixes me in frames, on buttons that chooses no one. Moving up high is a lie. A take to talk a toxin in me. Positivity are the levels, leveling process and emotions found in my wrist with numbers that bounds the needles of time, making me a make believe. No one really gets over the stops that taps me. It'll get better. <laughs> the flights force me, thinking I am gravity. As the monitor becomes a dictator of my progress, Kreplin want Freud Weber, ah, oh, that German efficiency, sliding me in compartments as mirrors reflect what I could be, not who I am, like a hallucination lifting in each session of being still stuck in a diagnosis of being a dependent on a prescription to stand up, looking like a patient lost in every beep of an illusion, feeling like I'm next to get off at my destination. I'll never arrive at. Have you? Thank you. 
All right. Um, so get to the next. And this one I just wrote a couple of days ago. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot to say content warning. <laughs> um, content warning again. Um, <clears throat> so if you feel that um, your mental health is compromised, uh, you may uh, mute or turn off the sound. So, yeah. <clears throat> This one is called Organ Nice. <clears throat> I didn't want to talk about it. The fear of being raped again. Like a clockwork of midnight. Between the chatters of eyes and the stares of lips. They're as unbreakable as time. They gawk at my misery more efficiently, more effectively than death who did win, wished me something different. When she saw me that night, a timeless mistake, violation is a volition, willed and prompt. Such as my new rapists, they take my consent too. It is conscious and timely. Their judgment is as punctual like a scheduled punctuation of pity, tallying what's left when they set me up as their hugs betray an eight second rape of, they're there, it's okay. I am not okay. I'll never get over it. Mercy is not for me, rape. It's always about them, the ones who gags help like a pause that counts how many parts are still fine after their egos deserve my tears to fall away in a stopwatch. Stop. I wish they can stop. But once a victim, always a victim, we're the endless Gossip of how brokenness is held like a number. I am 06102017. Thank you very much. Rami Salam. Well, well, as usual, Lacan, you leave most of us speechless. Uh, with that uh, uh, quite emotional poem, I mean, really, uh, I, I think I've had, I couldn't say the pleasure, but, I've started, but I think it was the emotional pleasure of hearing it before. It's just a great, great poem. Thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing um, it. The last poem, um, yes, it is about me. Um, it did yeah. happen to me on that date. And I want, uh, I, I want people to also remember poets that our poetry is also an advocacy, a platform. So thank you. Well, thank you. Deep breath. Okay. We have a couple of poets left and I'm happy that you will be able to read. And uh, uh, Julie and Jenny and uh, Gustav, if you'd like to read, Jasmine, uh, I'll come in for a couple of minutes. Julie, I, I, I met recently, um, though I had a moment in which I just forgot everything uh, at, the, at the Chicago afterwards um, event. And I remember her poetry quite well. Julie's a, an excellent poet. I don't have your uh, biography in front of me, but from Chicago, a couple of poems from Julie. Thank you. Let's see. So, so that's not it. That's a picture of my dad. Sorry. I do this all the time. It just goes wrong now. Oh, is that the uh, take your, you know, take your time. You know, take your time. Uh, I'll move on to the next poet. What you want to do is just put your poem on your desktop and clear everything else off. So when you hit the share, you'll see it right away. That's the easiest way to to correct that. All right. Okay. Uh, so John, uh, we'll come right back to you, Julie. John. All right. you, you care to uh, to to uh, to read a bit? Sure. Hi, John. John, I know from my workshop, uh, living in New York State, um, and uh, 
because we recently met and we have a lot in common. John, <laughs> we do. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Okay, this is a <laughs> this is a poem that that was workshopped at uh, Khan's uh, workshop about reading poetry. Um, so I thought I would kind of practice, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> It can't wait. The next breath, the next heartbeat, the next step of the evening walk on a dirt road. The layers of purple and orange smoothing out rough edges. The mist uncurling from oceans, awakening flora to flare. Even if the ball of my foot bears down on a pointed stone, an ankle or a knee twists, or the road grinds from a car behind on a blind curve. Hmm. <laughs> you have a second you'd like to read, John? I love that. Actually, yeah, I do. Sure. This is an old one. Um, I was in South Africa for 18 years um, and I lived out in the country and baboons were very much a part of the wildlife there. So this is called Like Rocks. A desert father said, that we should be like rocks in the face of suffering. I sit on ancient weather-beaten boulders and hear the wind scraping their surface. Come, some have deep crevices, one a crater with a rippling pool. My face fractures in its reflection. Someone has placed small stones neatly around its perimeter. A gesture of gratitude for an implicit understanding. Baboons bark and bend into mountains in the distance. I look for them, but do not see them. No one ever does in this valley. Mm. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. Thank you, John. You're welcome. I've had a I've had a different experiences with, with baboons. Um I've been a couple of times to Africa and one trip to Botswana, I was playing my guitar and uh, in a, in a tent, and all these baboons gathered around when I started playing samba. So I have a couple of things that bamboo, bam, uh, that baboons prefer samba. Anyway, I'll share that with you someday. <laughs> Julia, are you? Uh, are you? Uh, do you have it uh, comfortably for yourself? You got it. Still on mute. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> we'll try this again. Uh, there how's you go. That? You got it. Two All half right. sonnets. Two half sonnets. Would you compare me to a bowl of pho? <laughs> My blood test says I'm more like foie gras. <laughs> Physicians seem to think that's something bad. My cat sure seems to find me delicious as the salt lick at the edge of a pond. I can't stop sonneting. Is that a thing? It will make work emails interesting. <laughs> Two. My butt's been the bait of many switches. 
as I'm more of an emotional slut, squandering my feelings on the unworthy, remaining imperfectly iambic, not to say ignorant of prosody. I have all the requisite credentials, may as well repurpose as poetry. <laughs> That's great. More. <laughs> Got any more? You're on mute, yeah. Not today. Oh, wow. Well. I have many more, many, many I'm more, sure, but not I'm today. Sure. But my book is coming out Monday. So it's called About Time. Yeah. Wow. You can get it from Amazon or it's on Bookshop. Your local bookseller can get it from Ingram. So it'll be widely available. You can pre order until Monday for a discount from Cathexas Northwest Press. Really interesting. Now, yeah. Mark. Love yeah. Wayland, did you uh, want to read? I do. I want to very much. There you go. Well, finish us off. I'm sorry. I did, you were at the bottom of the be, list, but I've somebody been, has to finish. And I've been ignored by experts. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, shoot. You can just X that out. I'd like to. However, uh, and the black, the black, the red one on the top left. Thing, yeah. I I have this uh, ready to share. Let's see half if sonnet. I'll have to look into what a half sonnet is. It's just <laughs> not me, <laughs> me going there. Uh, And Mark, can I zap another one in there real quick? Uh, sure. Uh, take your time, uh, Wayland. Why don't you put your take your time, put your thing in the uh, in the put put it on on your desktop with no no other clutter around. Looks like, uh, and it should. You know, uh, I would love to get one in as well. This is Jasmine. Oh, please, sure. Um, X that. Yeah, keep X in. Then you're going to get to your homepage. And find your poem somewhere there. Looks like a homepage of a poet. <laughs> a desktop of a poet. <laughs> it was a, yeah. I think that the one? Mark, I have several things too. Okay. Well, let's just clear, you know, um, well, then take your time. Why don't we move? Why don't we let Jasmine read a poem and then uh, John read another poem and, and we'll get back to you. We'll get there. Okay, fine. I'll try. Sure. Uh, Jasmine? All right. I'm Do I just? Uh, yeah. All right. I'm trying to just share the screen. There we go. All right. This one is called Venus as a Man. All right. What if Venus was a man? Would he lack? Would he be aggressive and lack emotions? Would he appreciate love, beauty, and pleasure? Not just sexual pleasure, but that of love and intimacy. Would he see family and relationships as being legitimate and share his feelings and emotions and be considerate or speak with love and compassion instead of being illiterate? Would he know how to flirt, adore, and romance? Would, it, would he be able to recognize beauty if it was standing right in front of him? Would he be able to hear the sound of birds and find meaning? Would his light shine so bright that it's beaming? At the end of it all, would Venus as a man have meaning? Or would he be on the fence leaning, not ready to show his full hand of love and hide behind the smoke screening? The world still needs love from Venus, even if he was a man with a penis. <laughs> <laughs> so, that one is called <laughs> Venus as a man. And if you allow me, I have uh, one more. Um, and this one, I thought about featuring it in my first book uh, called Unedited Volume One. Um, that's available on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, but it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's designed for moments like this. So this one is called Changing Faces. So Changing Faces becomes the inspiration behind creating multiple realities. 
hiding all of our abnormalities. Do you, do you have it? That, do, could you scroll to it, perhaps? Oh, can you guys not see it? Oh, go share no. and pause. I'm sorry. Let me let me stop and then go back to it. All right. All right, cool. Here we go. All right. This one is called, can you guys see it? Yes. Okay. This one is called Changing Faces. So Changing Faces become the inspiration behind creating multiple realities, hiding all of our abnormalities in several different sexualities because we can't understand our commonalities and it becomes technicalities against one another. So we change them faces as we try to change places, navigating different spaces, leaving behind no traces of our true self. And that is all I have for you guys today. Well, that's uh, that's a mouthful. I think we met also at the Chicago event, correct? Yes, we you did. Help? Yes, we did. Yes, Indeed, we I remember. Did. Good to see you again. <laughs> Good to see you again. And that's great to see your poems. Thank you. And uh, yeah, there you go, uh, Wayland. <clears throat> okay, I'll just head right in. This is Pollywog. We would go to the small stuff. My life began in a small, watery world, mostly head with a wriggling tail. I swam, but not by choice. I couldn't help it. It's my nature. Any bully or predator could take me out in a single go. The winds of change swept in like a sudden storm. Someone was reorganizing me. I had new cravings, a new appetite. My tail, my tail was shrieking away. What are these new appendages? Where did I get these lungs? And for what, for screaming or singing? Look at my legs. Now I move with equal ease on land and water. I laugh uproariously at my baby pictures. Do I ever look like that? My mirror says, what a handsome dude. Muscles Zeus would be proud of, a smile as wide as the Grand Canyon, soulful eyes that say, don't you just love me? I'll give you one more shot. This is a, happened to me when I was about six or eight. On the front porch, shoes cast off except for Sundays, shirt, unnecessary baggage, and cutoffs we call short pants. I lay on my back, in a gray painted porch swing made by my father's own hands, suspended in air by link chains from rafters on our tiny porch. On the hottest day in Oklahoma history, with no shade or air conditioning, in the grip of a cruel sun, heat like a merciless mother pulled earth to her bosom, clasping creatures of fiery embrace, daring living things to breathe. When like a gentle lover, a puff of wind stole across my flesh and was gone. I have a couple of others, but we may not have time for those. We don't have time for one more. I should think these are short poems. Uh, this, this is fairly short. It's called Just Like Me. Sure. Maybe God doesn't, maybe God doesn't have arms or legs or a belly button or a big toe. But you can bet he's got personality. He likes good things and doesn't like bad things, just like me. God is strong when he needs to be, gentle when it's called for. He loves babies and puppies and, in a pinch, kittens, just like me. Clothes by Gucci or Kitschy, Miss America or Mr. Magoo, tall or short, skinny or not, God is not big on appearances, just like me. You can ask God for stuff, but if it's an asinine request, he'll probably say, you must be kidding, just like me. God doesn't sweat the small stuff. People who annoy him with petty matters should just get off their butts and do it, just like me. God doesn't keep an enemies list. He knows who his friends are. He doesn't wait till Christmas to find out who's been naughty or nice, just like me. God won't always help you if you get in a jam. He might leave you hanging to teach you a lesson, just like me. If you're dumb enough to tick God off, he'll take you to the woodshed behind the gym or under the bleachers and teach you a lesson you won't soon forget, just like me. Now that I think of it, I know a lot about God. We're not all that different. God, as it turns out, is just like me. Okay. Uh, thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but thank, uh, thank that was just wonderful. <laughs> the three poems uh, there. Uh, 
this, I think this is the name of my poetry book, Do Not Marry for Love. And this is the, one of the poems in my book, which is around here somewhere. Well, now that you, all right, you, 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 you caught our attention with it. Just, you have to read it. Then that's it. Last one. Well, I don't have, I, okay. Do not marry for love. Do not marry for love. Love like a tide flows and ends. Like a selfish toddler. It's never satisfied. Like a fire fuel spent, it dies out. Do not marry for love. Like a fever, love will overcome you. Like the awe of Christmas time when only the wrappings remain. Do not marry for love. You are not prince and princess. No one lives happily ever after. Love does not conquer all. Marry her for the light in her eyes, the reflection of the sun through her hair, her intoxicating smell, her beguiling smile. Marry her for the shape of her hands. Marry her for the tip of her nose. Marry her for the warmth in her voice. Marry her because you match, because she's strong. Then comes love that knows neither tide nor season, that will not go away, that needs no stoking, and blankets the soul like a snowy benediction. Okay, hmm. I had my turn. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think we all very much enjoyed that very unusual wit that you have and repetition and use of form. That was wonderful, Wayland. Thank you. Thank Certainly you. worth waiting for. Well, it's a, it's a little bit before the hour and we have a little time left if anybody uh, wants to read one last thing and close I, us off. I, I would love to jump in if I could. I was hoping to put this in mind, if you don't mind. Okay, not at all. We have about, well, about, about 10 minutes. We'll uh, thank you all for hanging out. We're almost uh, at the hour. Go ahead, Bill. And this only takes a few minutes, but I noticed you play guitar and I work with a musician and we have our own uh, YouTube channel. And this is actually the first poem I ever wrote. I didn't start writing until my late thirties. And this is the first one I came up with. And uh, you'll probably hear that it's very much related to, uh, I'm trying to replicate Tom Waits as much as I could here. Um, so let me. Just X that out. There you, there you go, yeah. Hey, pink me off. Crow and black tile as breakfast begins. Coffee so strong it pulls your eyelids back, slowing down. That last evening's drunk with 5 a.m. shadows. Use it to try to face the new day. Women's legs on spiked heels lift and other skirts to reveal specialties of the house. Initiating a physical negotiation. Trading the tangible the currency. Enclosed, tough hands, scaly and triangle, a whole week ripped from sunny side up. A single waitress covers ground. Butter warmed by sun, shining through the slatted glass, slowly rolls down a stack of brown pancakes. Silverware platters. China against China, napkin falls, voices chatter, while outside in pink neon, a sign blurs, best food in town, and it is. Oh, what a, what a great use of imagery and how you blended them. I think the next time, Bill, uh, put on, uh, when, you, when you can, you can adjust microphone speaker so yeah. we can hear a little bit better, but... Um, I think we got the gist of it, indeed. Sorry about that. And a really good mix of images. I wish I had the talent to uh, to put pictures together and fuse I them as you did. One of my uh, former students for putting that together for us. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And I got him to work cheap. A, a couple of dinners and a day out on the water. So. <laughs> Thank you, William. Do not marry for love. That's one of the takeaways I'll I'll, uh, I'll take with me from this. Of this October. Um, can we call it a day? Is everybody done? Thank you. I think so. I think so. And uh, thank you all very much um, for hanging out to the end here. I, I had a lovely time. I'm sure you all did. And um, 
there's just so much good stuff. I mean, the energy here is just amazing. And we're all, we're all such good poets and dare to share our work on screen to see how others do it and show the craft of our writing as well as how we try to read them. And I think it's just it's a wonderful event. Thank you for being part of it. And you can just, of course, contact me on Mark at poetwithguitar.com, very simple, and make sure you're on my, uh, please email me if you're not already on the list so I can send you all the events that we do. We have all kinds of great stuff going on. And uh, for sure, and we have our, our own open mic uh, from the Poetry Global Network uh, on Sun a week from Sunday, Bottoms Up, which we call it. Everybody takes shots of different poems and there's a great crowd from around the world. And um, that being said, Thank you all. It was a pleasure to uh, to host you, and will be a pleasure to do so in the future. Thank Thanks you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, Mark. You. See everybody again soon. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.